Welcome everyone again to the session Green Lessons, Lesson Ideas for Lower Levels. Um, so, get this to work. Ah, good. So, just a, a quick aim and outline. And what I'll do, I'll do the introduction first, and then I'll come back to the aim and the outline. Okay, so this is um, something that was inspired by my colleague, Emily Bryson. Uh, maybe you have heard of her. But it's very much using uh, drawings to illustrate ideas. So this is me, okay? Um, if I get my pointer up so you can see that. All right, so this is me here. Um, and I am an ESOL tutor. And as I was telling Joe earlier on in the session, um, it's actually quite a really decent job being a teacher. Um, so for me, it's the best job I've ever had. Um, I've all I'm also really quite keen on helping and sharing ideas, which is what I'm doing here today. Um, I normally give uh, webinars and workshops on things like digital skills. And more recently, I've been doing it along the lines of sustainability um, because I am quite keen on saving the planet. And I say saving because we're not really saving the planet as such. Uh, we're just trying to um, slow down the, the changes that are happening. Um, and I'm also very, very interested in learning more about the science behind why things are happening, how everything is all connected and, and the impact it's having um, on a social and economic way. So that's uh, like my little pet interest, which is a very big interest. Uh, another part of me, I'm a mom, I've got three kids, they're all teenagers, so um, yeah, that's all fun. I wear two other hats. I um, am a member of NATECLA, which is an organisation across the UK for teachers of uh, English and community languages. And because it's such a huge organisation, we've broken it up into different branches. And I'm the branch manager for, um, or not branch manager, all wrong, I'm the branch chair for the East of England committee. I also work for another organization which has to do with uh, accredited learning and I uh, sort of look at their assessment papers and, and make sure that's okay. And in any free time I have it's spent outdoors um, at the seaside just taking a walk getting some fresh air even if it's in my garden. So that's just a little bit about me so you know who I am. I'll go back to the um, can I get the slides to work? Go back to the first slide, which is our aim and outline. Um, so really and truly, I hope that these aims sort of resonate with what you would like to achieve with your learners um, in terms of raising that awareness, um, encouraging people to make individual efforts, which is consistent and not to feel as if their small actions don't count because they do count and collectively they count even more. So it's really to sort of um, get lesson ideas into the classroom so that your students would, at whatever age they are, whether they're younger learners or adult learners like um, my learners, then they can feel as if that their, their, their lifestyle changes that they could make will um, add to, well, not, sorry, I have don't add to the problem, take away from it instead, so that they don't continue making that choices that add to the problem, that they can make small changes to take away from the problem and instead add to the solution. Um, so really the bulk of the session would be to share some resources that I use in my own lessons. Um, and then of course you are more than it, uh, welcome to sort of take screenshots of these ideas. And I think this session is being recorded as well. Um, so you can always go back to it, but do take screenshots if you like, so that after my presentation, you can um, sort of share, you know, any ideas of how you could adapt or use them differently. Okay. So I'll leave that bit open for, for us at the end. During the session, because it's uh, so few of us, so then I don't mind if you ask questions in between or, or make a comment that that's fine by me. Okay. Okay, so um, now onto the resources. I've sort of broken them up into three broad areas, one being weather and climate, 
and then the other one global warming and uh, things we can do to uh, to make a difference from a sustainability point of view. Now, uh, it is all very much lower level, um, sort of geared towards the lower level. So it may be a bit, you, you may want to sort of tweak things for uh, your learners, okay? So um, the first one here is weather and climate. Now, we tend to teach, at least in the UK, a, a lot about the weather. I think mostly because we need to check our phone in the morning. What's the weather going to be like today? What are we going to wear? You know, <laughs> at least for me. Um, but the idea here really is to expand on weather into climate. And um, if you want to make that distinction between weather and climate, you can use a simple little diagram of time and you can let your students know that it's um, weather, is be, it's more of a short term uh, event, whereas climate happens over a much, much longer period of time. Um, so the ideas here for climate would be to teach maybe different types of climates, or you can expand on those climate words into tropical forests or polar ice, or you could sort of take a, a more uh, climate emergency or, or climate crisis kind of spin and look at words like environment, global, global warming, pollution and things like that. So the next activity I'm going to show you looks at climate types. So this is a matchup exercise then uh, that builds on uh, eliciting the meanings of words beforehand. And then the idea here would be for learners to sort of visualize the words that you spoke about and match the pictures to them. So it's a really, really simple activity, but again, you can adapt this to suit your learners and their needs. So we are starting with the very simple and then I'm moving it up a little bit, okay? So here we've got another activity, another matchup activity, but this time, um, it's to see if your students can remember the difference between weather and climate. So there's a QR code here. If you have a phone handy and you want to sort of try it out now, you can. Great. All right. So I see that you've had a little play with that activity. So again, it's something that you can um, change if you use WordWall or some other um, online tools that you're more comfortable with. So I'm going to go on to the next activity then, which is about weather events and the effect that it has. Okay. So oftentimes we teach things like too much or a lot of and, and that kind of vocabulary. So in this lesson, you could teach them about different weather events. Um, so you could look at different weather events and you'll notice I'm using icons this time. Um, and we can, you know, discuss about what, what they are. You have heat wave, hurricane, storm, tornado, typhoon, monsoon. Um, maybe you know the difference between these already, um, where a hurricane and a typhoon are pretty much the same thing, except that they're given different names because of where they are formed. So a hurricane is formed over the North Atlantic and certain parts of, I think, um, in my directions right, Eastern Pacific, whereas a typhoon would be Northwest Pacific. Um, and so, you know, you can have a nice little discussion, talk about whether, whether events like that. And obviously if it's too much, a lot of, you can say, so you have a storm and you have too much rain or too much um, wind, for example, it becomes a hurricane. And then you can introduce um, the effects one would lead to drought, one would lead to flood. And this is something you can either project onto your whiteboard or you can, um, if you use Jamboard, I don't know if you use Jamboard, but you can use, just duplicate the slides and each student has their own slide on Jamboard and then they can then online, they can just draw a little matchup um, uh, activity. So something like that, okay? But that's just a little simple thing there for them to start understanding the impacts of these weather events. 
if you wanted to, you know, you can always expand the discussion depending on your your learners um, on the further effects of, of drought or flood and how this affects people's lives. Now, one of the things you'll notice with this is that each one of them can match up ap apart from tornado. A tornado doesn't lead to drought or flood. So that can be like a little extra that you've got there that you might want to then ask them, you know, what do they think a tornado, the effect of a tornado might be? And then you can have a separate discussion on that. And coming out of that would be lots of new vocabulary and, and things you can teach there. Okay. okay. So now I'm going to move on from weather and climate to global warming. Okay, so um, using the climate words that we had before, um, we can introduce that uh, as well as some new words. So if I just go back to that first slide and I'll just show you, just run back there very quickly. Yep, so we had words like environment, we had global warming, pollution, um, not emissions, but we can take some of this climate vocabulary and we can do something on global warming. We'll get there. There we go. Okay. So we can look at words like globe or global, planet, earth, warming, emissions, pollution, and human activity. Now, I don't think at lower levels they're going to learn the word anthropogenic. Maybe you can do that at higher levels. So we'll leave it at human activity. Um, right, so this is where I got creative with a bit of drawing. And we can draw um, <laughs> the Earth. <laughs> okay. And we can say planet Earth. There we go. And we can make that differentiation with them that Earth with a capital E is the name of our planet, but lowercase e obviously would be like um, just soil and, and things like that. Okay. And then you can look at, um, I've got so many ideas here, I want to make sure it's in the right order. Okay, so that we can look at other words for, for this, which is planet or globe or earth. Okay, so we've got different words coming up here. Um, and then we can look at the word warming. So we've got our planet Earth. You can tell them that, you know, or, or before you even get to it, you can ask them about what warming might mean. So it's the act of, of getting warm or, or feeling hot. So you get them to understand that warming is. And then you can introduce the fact that we've got something called the atmosphere. And the atmosphere would be, oh, whoops. Oh, no, 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 sorry. Right, the atmosphere here it is warming and therefore, yeah, now it's gone red there. There you go. So we use a little bit of color and drawing to sort of make things visual for them to let them know that the atmosphere is warming. So it's just really getting the vocabulary there because I think really maybe our students might know some of this already in their own language, but it's just giving them the vocabulary that they need to express it in English, okay? Um, okay, so now you can just link this back to the previous idea of um, different weather events, okay? So the weather events that we spoke about before, oh, wrong slide, my apologies. So the weather events we spoke about before, like the typhoon or heat wave, et cetera, these are getting more serious and therefore more extreme. And again, you could revisit that and talk about how the impact changes and, and how, you know, who, who, who's, who's being affected more. You could start introducing things like the global south or, or different countries, because maybe they're from those countries as well. So lots of opportunities for discussion there. Um, and this one, I sort of, I don't teach younger learners, I have to admit, but I try to think about what we can do for younger learners. So we could think about what shape is our planet? It's a globe. What other spheres are there? 
Um, and can you draw it, draw that idea that you have? And then I thought maybe you can guess my drawing. I'm going to show you some drawings and it's your turn to guess uh, what you think it might be. Okay, so the first one. <laughs> no, it's not an orange. <laughs> it's a moon, maybe. Bubble, yes, Helen, thank you. Okay, now this one. An orange. <laughs> Thanks, Rebecca. Yin and Yang. Tennis ball. Tennis ball, yes. Cherry. Oh, lolly. Okay. Lollipop. Lollipop. Yeah. And... <laughs> And the planet? No, quite a planet. It's really small, tiny. An atom? Okay. No, not that small. It's something small that you can <laughs> play with in your house. A button? And you can, no, it's a sphere. It's a three dimensional shape. A marble. A marble, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can have a lot of fun with drawings and, and getting the, the younger ones to, to really get into it in terms of understanding what the sphere is and getting the vocabulary right. The drawings should be imperfect to allow for creative guessing. Okay. Um, good. So now we could sort of move on. We're back to these keywords that we had, which uh, we can move on to emissions, pollution, and human activity. So ideally, my slides should have been in a certain order, but that's okay. So we can first ask the question what activities cause emissions? Um, or we could start with the drawings and you could sort of uh, show them the emissions coming out and say, do you know what this is? And then, you know, you've arrived to the term emissions, okay? So it could be things like smoke or um, pollution or the exhaust from a car or a plane. So you can talk about uh, emissions, okay? Where does it come from? And we can look at cars uh, from flying to the country, factories, and you can ask them about other vehicles. So you're getting more vocabulary about different vehicles that can cause um, emissions. And then you can talk about what can you do to reduce the emissions, get their ideas out there in terms of public transport, electric cars, uh, using a bicycle or walking. And, and of course, you can look at reducing flying or um, how you, you know, where your goods come from, where they're made, things like that. Okay, so lots of different things you can do with this. And again, the drawings are fantastic, don't you think? <laughs> okay, so we can reduce, by reducing our emissions, we can reduce global warming because emissions is what's causing our environment to, to get warmer, all these greenhouse gases in the air. Okay. Um, so that's it for uh, the weather and climate and global warming. And then we're going to just move on a little bit to what we can do, which are some sustainability ideas. OK, so here we've got two charts. OK. Um, and I think, I don't know if you've seen either of them, but the infographic on the left, I've seen it quite often. And it shows you, you know, the impact of our actions. So we can do things like turning off the lights, switching to LED lights, which is a low impact, uh, hanging out our clothes to dry, uh, recycling. Uh, those things have a more moderate impact. And high impact would be things like um, uh, a vegan or vegetarian diet, switching from a hybrid to an electric car, riding a bike, having one less child even. The infographic on the right, however, I think is a lot more um, easier for, for for lower level learners to take on board and, and comprehend. So it's a really, really nice, simple diagram, uh, lots of clear pictures, and it also raises the question as to why we probably shouldn't be eating a, a capybara, because it doesn't look like <laughs> any other animal that we actually do eat. Okay, so. Um, Here's well, one thing we can do with this uh, infographic. Um, and I'm sure you can probably think of other ways to use this. We can talk about um, easy and hard. Okay, so we have a range and we could talk about easy and easier, hard, harder, uh, low and high. We can talk about um, uh, 
more or less, most or least, little things like that. Okay. And you can have your learners identify which ones they already do or which ones they could do. So maybe they are already turning off lights or maybe they are already buying local food or recycling even. So you can ask them, you know, which ones do you do, which ones um, they could do. You can even get them to represent this in their own little charts as well. So you're embedding a bit of math into their lessons. And you can also encourage them to make a climate pledge of some sort so that it's not just an activity for now, but something that it's really, really long term that they can commit to. OK, so I'm moving on to the next lesson idea and I'll just pause for a little drink. because I'm talking a lot. OK, so one of the bigger things we can do is change our diet. And here we've got a little diagram of um, the carbon footprint of the food that we eat. And unsurprisingly, meat and dairy are at the top. And as you go further down the line, um, vegetables and um, potatoes and legumes are right at the bottom. So the first idea here would be a bit of, you know, getting them to, to talk and ask each other questions. For example, what did you do for breakfast? Um, what are you going to have for lunch? Or what will you have for dinner? So you're looking at the different tenses as well, but you're also getting them to think about the food and the impact that their choices are going to make. Um, you can also, as a different idea, you can have a sort of a survey. So um, they can go around the class and they can practice asking simple questions about what do you like to eat uh, or what do you not like to eat? What do you buy at the supermarket? Um, do they shop at a farmer's market? So do they buy things locally? And who buys items from the chart? So just little things like that you can now um, adjust for, for your own class. And of course, after all of this, you know, it's for them to decide or, or for them to, to appreciate how their decisions are having an impact on the environment again. Okay. Okay, so another lesson idea. Yes. Have you seen this diagram before? It's just quite nice now. Okay. Um, so I think this was uh, quite easy for learners to to sort of understand in that you can't make a huge step in, in one go. You've got to sort of take small steps and build on it. So you do one and then the next and the next. So you can use this as a sort of a guide for um, your learners to maybe this time create a poster of what things they use that are currently plastic and and they can have a look at what they've given up or what they've replaced. So it's a sort of a, an idea to get them to learn the vocabulary, but also to act on it. So not just learning in the classroom, but they're taking it outside the classroom into their homes. Um, some of the things here may be applicable, some may not be, but the idea is to cut down on single use plastic. Um, it could be an a, a individual, um, activity and then they share it with each other in the class or you might want to take this outside of the classroom and you can get other classes within the college to do it you can get the teachers and the staff to also do it and make it into a whole um, activity that everyone does um, one of the things I've done is create a Facebook group for my learners because a lot of them are on social media on Facebook. And it was a nice way for them to sort of outside of the classroom, share ideas on, on what they're doing. And because I also do encourage embedding digital skills, this was one other way to, to do this. Okay, so this activity now, a little different. Um, so, I think that the level here, if I were to convert it from ESOL, would be um, maybe B1, B2, I reckon. Okay. So you've got some 
again, some words here like repair, refill, reuse, recycle, reduce, replace, refuse. As you can see, there is a commonality, which is the prefix re. So that in itself could be something that you can uh, introduce and, and talk about teach uh, as well. Um, the activity here, and I'll, I'll share the mentee. Oh, OK, right, this is how I'm doing it. OK, so what you need to do is talk about the words first, OK? And then you can show them this. So they can have an idea of what the words might actually mean. So repair would be here, okay, refill, reuse, recycle. So they have an idea of, of what the words uh, might mean or what, what actual physical things they could refer to. Um, and what you can get them to do then is to do a mentee. Uh, I don't know if you use Mentimeter, but you can do something that's similar. So you can ask them, do a poll, how many of these do you do? OK, so I'm just going to hide that again. And there's a QR code here now. So if you want to try the mentee, please feel free. Um, and I'm going to get my mentee up and share that on the screen with you. OK, so already there's some responses coming in, as you can see on the screen. You can see the Menti screen, right? Yeah? OK, good. So good. So we see that a lot of people are already reusing, they're recycling, reducing, and replacing coming down quite at the end, which is great because you want to do that least of all. Um, so great. So, you, so students then get a nice little visual, and, and they can practice doing stuff like this. OK, on slide two. Is that working for you? Yes, thanks, Chris. OK. OK, is that all of you finished? So we can then compare this to the diagram. We'll see how well you did. So at the very, very top, you should refuse to buy something. If you don't need it, don't buy it. Then try to reduce how much of it you actually do buy. You then you should try and reuse the things that you buy and refill as much as you can. Repair the things that get broken. And if you can't refill, repair, or reuse, then you replace it. And the things that you do buy to replace it, if you can't do any of the above, then try to recycle it. And last of all, then it should go to the bin. OK, so this was a diagram I got off of the Internet. I thought it was really nice. I included the word refuse at top because I think it's important to, to think about if you need to buy something in the first place. Um, and it's just a little activity to get people to think and learn about words that start with art. OK, good. Here's another one that I'd like you to think about. Okay. So this one has to do with our oceans now. So let's think about what do these shapes look like? <laughs> Quite frankly. Well, so can we name the sea creatures? We did try, okay, but they're not actually sea creatures. These are the sea creatures that currently reside in the Mediterranean. So can you now identify each object? And we know this one here. Mm, the green. Plastic bottle. Yep. And our very thin hammerhead shark was a... Plastic bag. Plastic yeah. bag, absolutely. And King Kong, would you reckon King Kong might have been? Trying to read it. Oh! <laughs> food, food wrapper. A food wrapper, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, okay. So what about this one here? I'm going to block it with my... <laughs> oh. <laughs> like a tin can. Yeah. Okay, it's actually a battery. Mm. Uh -huh. Wow. Um and then these little black blobs would be 
Mm. Oil, bits of oil mm. and tar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And our starfish was actually a uh, cigarette butt. Cigarette, cigarette, cigarette butt. Butt. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's really good. So we can then, you know, identify all of these things and ask them to put them in alphabetical order. You know, can they put the words in alphabetical order? And then we can start talking more about the environment. We can say, how can we prevent our waste from ending up into the sea? And then, then following on from that, we can talk about which ones cause the most harm, do you think, you know? Can you put them in order of least to most dangerous according to your opinion? And then you can compare that to your your pair and see, you know, how how the opinions stack up. And then maybe at that sort of intermediate level, they should be able to um, uh, explain why they have that opinion. So here are the words then um, that are of all the items. So this very large plastic bottle, I've only learned, was called a plastic demijohn. I, I had no idea it's called a demijohn, but apparently it is. Um, so we've got other items here, as you can see. None of them are particularly um, marine friendly. OK. Hmm. Yeah. So that actually brings me to the end of the lesson ideas that I had for you, which I think was about 12 or 13 lesson ideas today. And um, this is where I say it's your turn. Okay, So during the course of it, I do hope that you were taking screenshots, you were making notes. So what would be some of your ideas then? Or how would you do things differently in your class? Or do you have any questions from me or anyone else? I'm opening up the floor to you. Okay, hey, thank you again, Carol. That was uh, that was really fabulous. It was really um, great to hear all those ideas, and you know, know that these are really practical ideas that you're using in the classroom, and um, you know, things that that we can either either use or you know tweak for ourselves. So, um, thank you so much for that. 